Good evening. My name is Thurman Greco, and the name of this program is Let's Live, and it's coming to you from Educational Television Channel 23 in Woodstock, New York, and from the YouTube channel. And we have an exciting guest tonight that I am so excited to have. This is her second visit, and I've already been talking to her about coming back a third time. So tell us, Susan Saxman, tell us about your book. Well, and tell us what's going on. Well, there's so much going on. Um, my book is called The Reluctant Psychic. It's a memoir of my life, my strange life. And I'm a professional clairvoyant, um, psychic, if you will, that has been working, doing what I do for, I think, the last three decades, not to age myself, but you all know I've been around forever. And um, it's been, um, it came out five years ago, but they're still talking and promising me that they're going to do something with it, whether it's a movie, TV show, because it's so, I don't know, it's, it's, it's good for these times, these, these crazy times. And um, it tells the story of my, my weird childhood, of, of when I grew up seeing things. I still see things, by the way. And uh, people come to me from all over to uh, get my uh, opinions on certain things in their life, past, present, and future. And um, I just tell them what I see. I'm kind of like a, a living, breathing transistor radio, that, or a crystal ball, really. I'm just a crystal ball. You work through vision? All vision. All vision. All vision. Yeah. Sometimes I hear stuff. But, but mostly, mostly vision. Mostly you see. Mostly I see. I'm, uh, my, my, uh, my best friend, Sarah, calls me um, Turban Head. I'm also called the Oracle by some, whatever. I'm just, I'm just uh, you know, maybe I'm totally insane, but I get stuff. I see stuff. Do you see it in color? Yeah, like a movie. I see movies in my head constantly. Now, when I was younger, I would see um, actual spirits standing there very solid. Um, now it's more like a... Because everything in the world has gotten very fast-moving, uh, whether it's the, the uh, high-speed internet or G5, whatever, uh, everything is fast. So my movie clips in my head have gotten extremely fast-moving. Um, and I think... Uh, I have moved from my theory of, uh, it is metaphysical, it's very uh, spiritual, but at the same time it's scientific because I think we're dealing with quantum physics. I think uh, I've come to the conclusion that past, present, and future are all happening at once, and when a person sits with me during a session, I'm able to tune into past, present, and future. I see them as who they are now, who they were as a child, who, who they were perhaps even in past incarnations, and the future. But unfortunately, it could be very confusing because it's coming to me extremely fast. So everyone who comes to me for sessions, I encourage them to um, tape it. Tape the sessions, whether it's videotape, audio, you know, cell, cell phones, of course, are what we're using now. Um, back when I began doing this, I would supply the cassettes. That's very aging, isn't it? I have the cassette tapes. And so how does a person cassettes. get in touch with you? Um, all um, I do everything um, with my uh, web page and my uh, Gmail. It's Susan Fiona Saxman at Gmail. I don't do um, virtual readings. I don't do Skype. I don't do anything on uh, intranets. Intranets. <laughs> I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> on the Why? interweb. I don't use the interweb. So a person comes to you... Face to face. Face to face. It has to be face to face with me. I don't do anything on phone. Uh, that makes people angry because they, they want they want their appointments and they want them now. And they want Skype. They want you know um, anything done. But if that's not how you I work, don't do it. I don't do it because I think the electronics screw up the um, the the integrity of the information. Well, I won't then, do it. I then won't do it. that's the way and it is. I could be extraordinarily rich if I did do it, but I won't do it. But I don't want to. Well, then that's that's your job. And I won't. <laughs> I'll stick to it. So people, yeah, people actually argue with me. You mean you won't do a Skype? No, no. I won't. But um, and they're coming. They're contacting me from literally all over the world, all the time. And also, I have another reason for not doing it that way. If I took it that way, I'd be busy twenty-four-seven, and I can't do that. 
the amount of people I'm getting is over the top. I, I don't know really where they're coming from. I've never advertised. Um, the book is kind of an advertisement because it is available all over the world. It's available on Amazon. But it's not new. I mean, it's been out for five years now. Oh, but I loved your book. Thank you. Thank I, you re much. I really, I enjoyed every page, Thank every you. word, every, and, and when I, I went to Barnes & Noble when you did a, uh, Thank you. what, an author pe show or something, and, and I just thought it was the greatest thing. So that's, I'm glad it's Thank still you. available. Oh, and it's very, it's very popular. It's funny, though, what, when you read, when you write something like a memoir, that's so personal. You, you have to realize that everyone knows everything about you. And it was funny, like, I, I'm a lifelong vegetarian. And apparently everyone knows that, like in the world. Because I would be on a deli line buying my son some meat. Unfortunately, he still eats meat. It's his choice, right? And I actually had a woman come up behind me going, you don't eat that though, do you? <laughs> You're a vegetarian. <laughs> And I turned around going, my God, she knows. And I had to go, no, no, I'm buying this for my son. <laughs> and just last week, I was at the, the taco lab in town, and I was buying, once again, my son a, a vegetarian, a, no, a meat taco. And a woman I didn't know said, but you're a vegan, aren't you? And I'm like, sorry. I have to apologize a lot. But it's funny, like, everyone knows everything, the good and the bad. Well, it's hard it's funny, to though. have a particular diet, and then how old is your son? <laughs> he's quite old, and I'm still buying him his food. But he's, he's cute. Well, listen, you know, he's once cute, you he get old enough to talk, I mean, they're going to want something different. <laughs> yeah, he can, if he wants to eat his meat, as long as he knows what it is, and at this age, he certainly does. But I won't eat anything with a face, and everyone knows that. So, so that's fine. But it's really, and you know, I have to look everything to me, even the most bizarre situations at this point. The world is crumbling to, you know, to ruin. And we, I have a weird sense of humor. We have to laugh. We do. I mean, it's horrible. It's a, it's a mask of comedy and tragedy, but what are we going to do? I'm well, right. That's, that's a good attitude. I'm what are we going to do? I'm not going to live in fear. I can't. You know, during... I think the last time I was here was September, I believe. It was a while back. And yeah, it was September 9th, actually, and the pandemic was like really happening. But and since then, of course, it was still going on. Um, during the pandemic, it was the busiest I've ever been in my life. And um, you know, since then, I did get I did get the um, vaccine. I'm not fearful. I wasn't fearful then. I'm not fearful now. I've decided not to not to live in fear. What case or asara? Well, you know, I feel like there are a lot of people who don't want to get it, and that's fine, yeah. but we have to think beyond ourselves. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we, we, do. we come in contact with other people, and uh, it's a community thing. For me, it's a community yeah, absolutely. thing. absolutely. I mean, people are so fearful, and you have to, you know, they were wondering, like, they said to me, are you getting, are you getting the vaccine? Hey, I'm full of tattoos. I've had... Being put in me, and I never question that. I never question like, "Well, is this going to kill me?" It hasn't. Right. It's not. It didn't, and I'm not worried. And you know, if you have, I have faith. You know, I we go on, one way or the other. I'm not going anywhere. Well, I I feel like um, about vaccines, and many many people in Woodstock. I I joke and. At one point, I wrote a blog post about it. You know, if I'm sitting at a table and I start talking about what I think about vaccines, by the time I get through talking, I'm the only one at the table. But you know, really, I have lived in two third world countries. And once you have seen a person who has survived typhoid fever. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'm not I'm a believer. I'm sorry. You have a vaccine here. Right here. This yeah, is a good exactly. spot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I just don't want the disease. And look what they're putting in the food anyway. Right. Look what they're putting in the animals that some of you ingest. <laughs> what are they And look what they put in our cleaning products. Forget it. And you what know? they put in our clothes. I mean, you know, forget it. Everything, you know, if if we if we survive to this age, we're lucky already. Yeah. So, you know, I'll take my chances. 
and travel. You know, my my friends um, invited me to travel uh, to England. I hope I get to go there. Maybe it won't, but I, I would like to again. I love it over there. They love me over there. It's home, you know, so let's see what happens. That would be nice. It would be nice to go somewhere again. But you, you know, sometimes when I think about our situation, I think that one of the things, and you may, you may agree or disagree, one of the reasons that we are in the mess is, of course, you know, that our spiritual development, but the place, the planet is so filthy. Humans did it. Yeah. yeah, it's completely did it. We can't blame anything else but ourselves. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, um, you know, it says a lot about us and what we brought upon ourselves. Yes. And I could go on about this forever, but I, you know, I could do my, my soapbox. <laughs> well, now, when people come see you, what are the three things that people come see you for? What Love, are the th money, and health. Love, money, and health. There's nothing else. Love, money, and health. Really? Yeah. It's the same old thing forever. Ever. There's nothing else. You know. Love, money, and health. Uh, love is the most important. Money and um, health is really interesting because this has happened from the beginning of my time doing what I do. Bad diseases, I feel. Like a woman came in the other day and I got incredibly bad stomach pains from her. And she didn't want to admit it, but I knew she had stomach cancer. And then mm -hmm. at the end of the reading, I, she finally said that she did. Mm -hmm. um, the pain was unbearable, and yet it wasn't until she finally said, yes, I've been diagnosed. I kept going to her, I'm like, are you sure that the doctor didn't say anything? In the meantime, I felt like my insides were burning on fire. Oh. But it wasn't until she actually said, yeah, I was diagnosed. Then, then they subsided in me. But it's, it's all about energy from the people. It's all energy. Now, um, the, the, you know, um, one thing I do when I go home, I do write down notes of the more interesting clients for future reference and books and TV shows if, if it comes to that. But I mean, there's always the stories of like the woman who, you know, was a little upset with her, I know this is, is kind of an ironic story, but like the woman who was upset that her husband was retiring and she didn't know what she was gonna do with him. She was kind of annoyed that, oh, what am I gonna do with him home all the time? And she was a little peeved he goes off to work on his last day of work and gets hit by a train. Oh! Yeah, not a pretty story. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And she feels a little guilty, but she's also a little relieved. <laughs> yeah. So it's stories like this, and I'm sitting there going, wow. Do I write this one down? Do I keep it to myself? Or do we share this? I mean, it's, it's that kind of thing like, oh, the stories are just so... So, and she and she came to see you after this had happened. Yeah, and he's you know he's fine. He comes through. He loves her. He wants her. He's in fact she's dating his best friend now. Oh, that's even that's too cute. She's kind of local. <laughs> By the way, um, it's stuff like this. So in a way, I feel like a really weird priest that knows everyone's secrets in town and around about. Of course, I'm not saying anything. You know that really is true. I really People do. come I and talk everything. to you. I know everything that was going on. But they go to the confession thing. Yeah, but I know the real nitty gritty. <laughs> right, because they I just go and tell the priest what he wants to yeah. hear. <laughs> I, know. I get the, I get the, I get the meany story, folks. I, I know <laughs> your secrets. So, <laughs> all of you. So what you do is very personal. Oh God, yeah. Oh God. Does anybody ever come to you and say what's going to happen to to the president? What's going to happen to the? Does anybody ever come to you like that? Oh yeah, during the whole, um, shall we say, Trump? I can't even say his name. Yeah. That administration. Yeah. Everybody was coming in. I mean, people even. Um, there were some voodoo dolls. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah. Did they work? Oh, well, he's not president anymore, is he? 
So, so we need to we need to take that. I had one in my store. You want? Okay. <laughs> we need to take it. I can't. Do you give classes in how to use no, a voodoo doll? No, no, no. Everything is about intentions. Anyone can do it, you know. And the thing is, which is the most important part of all of this, and it's kind of sad. I don't have, I don't have any power to do anything. People want to talk to their relatives, their, you know, everybody. Just talk to them. You don't need to come to me. I once did an article for a magazine, which was, I think it was one of my shining moments when I said, nobody needs a psychic. Don't come to me. Talk to your own mother. You don't need me to communicate with anybody. This is the most useless job anyone can possibly have. Go home, talk to her out loud, and she'll come through. You don't need anyone else. I'm a medium between the worlds. That's what mediums are. But you don't need me. I'm just open enough because I don't have that... I don't disbelieve. I'm not going to doubt my... Well, I do doubt myself, but I'm not going to stand here and be logical and say, well, is it true or not? I've been doing this too long to have that moment of disbelief come through and say, it can't be real. This is my only right, job I've if, had right. for the past 35, 38 right. years. If it were not real, it wouldn't be If it was not real, no long. one would be coming to me. Well, my question has been, and of course I really, when you read these books about Von Prague and then the He's other good. guy, uh, the young man who's uh, yeah. the Catholic, I can't remember his name now. When they go into the room and there's all these people in the audience and he says, okay, I'm thinking of this person. Why, why is it that they, f I guess they just lonesome for that person? Yeah, I think the per they, they're, they're trying so hard to connect and that's why the, the spirit comes through. One thing I want to kind of talk, I don't know if I talked about it last time, and it, it pro this will probably cause a ripple with some people, but it's a question I have. Nobody has ever said from the afterlife that they're in heaven or hell. No one has ever come and said, I'm in the heavenly realm. They've said they, they're with relatives, but there's never been a distinction like I'm up like, I know there have been psychics, even like Sylvia Brown or people who have said, they're doing a job. There's no job to do. You don't have a physical body anymore. There's no food to eat. There's nothing. They are, their existence is to be with their loved ones. So we kind of wish them or want them to come around so they come. But I don't know whether they exist. Oh, boy, I'm going to get in trouble. I don't no. know whether they exist without us thinking of them. Oh, that's a beautiful thought. I don't know whether they exist without us. That's you know, wonderful. There's a children's TV show, and not TV show, a movie of Coco about the Day of the Dead, and this thought, this folklore, if you will, has been around for many, hundreds of years, that when you stop thinking about a person, their spirit disappears, their ghost or whatever their essence disintegrates and goes to oblivion and maybe goes to peace and that seems to me kind of real we are, are wanting to communicate with them our love for them keeps them here so what happens is if your love for your mother or your grandfather mm -hmm. or your uncle Fred or whatever yeah. and thinking about him is what keeps him around then that indicates to me that there is no reincarnation. I think they want, if they want to come back, they will come back. But I don't see reincarnation like other people do. I don't think anyone ever comes back fully. Like I don't think John Lennon will ever come back as another John Lennon. I think aspects of that person will come back, like a person who would be kind, like kind of like Lennon, will come back. A little, like a little portion will come back, like a. A talent will come back that's like him, or a, a, a person that may be a little bit like Elvis would come back, but not fully him. You know, it's like little sprinkles yeah. of a person. Um, it's it's kind of hard to d describe. Uh, it's not fully they become that person 100% again. So when you interview a person, do you see their past lives? Yeah, I see it like a movie, like a woman today came 
And she was engaged for a couple of years to this one guy, and she was wondering, like, why won't he marry her? And why is it she wanted so badly to, like, make this official? And it, this is a common thing. But I said to her, I said, it's so very important you do this because it never was done in any previous lifetime. It's like, and I kept saying, you have to seal the deal. And I kept seeing one of those medieval seals, like that red, like a red <laughs> stamp, like a big, like Game of Thrones. It was like one of these things, like it had to be sealed, approved by the she king. She didn't get him to the altar in any of no. the past lives. No, and it's like you have oh, to that's do great. it. What and a I kept, story. I kept looking at her going, we have to seal it. And I saw like the red seal of the king coming down. And it kept repeating in my head. She said, that makes perfect sense to me. She said, it's so important to do it because we've never done it before. My question is, she goes home, she goes out to dinner with him, and she says, listen, Fred, this, it's now or never, and they do it. They, they seal the deal. They're going to mm -hmm. go to Las Vegas, or they're going to go yeah, somewhere anywhere. and get married. They're going to do it. And then that is going to shift their relationship. Yeah, it will get better, because right now the only thing is, is that this isn't... It's like, in this case, it's like a sacrament. Whether they, however they marry, it's a sacrament that is not complete. Some right. people, they could live together forever and it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. That piece of paper doesn't matter. But for them, it for was them, important. For them, it was something that was carried from lifetimes connected. So she's been hanging around with this guy for several... And waiting. Like, oh, man. Yeah, and it, it's... Who's in the, worth the kids that? Are, nobody, really. <laughs> I mean... Nobody's worth it. I, Lord. And I mean, it's it's so interesting because there are some people who are so absolutely happy with their people, and then some people are just so miserable they want them to die. <laughs> I have to hear well, their it. spouses are driving them crazy. <laughs> yeah, the spouses are driving a lot of people crazy. So it's it's um it's so interesting the dynamics of people and the the sort of people who come. As I might have told you before, there are doctors, there's there's psychiatrists who are coming. By the bus loans to Of me. course, I'm sure they are. <laughs> it's so, and but what makes me laugh, and I told a dear friend last night about this. People come to me with a, they want to know like about tax returns and like legal things, and it's like I know nothing about any of this, and I'm sitting there giving them like <laughs> legal, I'm not I'm not how I don't know how to do any of this, and yet I do, but I don't. But I do. So but it's not me. So I don't know. Right. It's just I don't know. it's just the, It comes through. It comes through. It's the information and you just translate. Well I the just know. Or they'll give me names and I know. But hey, I would be I'd be the first to say that I could be wrong, but these people keep coming, so I don't know. I really don't know anything. And yet I do. Well, it's good that you don't know anything. <laughs> I don't know anything. I think that, that gives you some relief. Yeah, but also it, it, it causes a huge amount of stress because every day I wake up and there's, I know people are coming in and I'm nervous wrecked thinking, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? Right, because oh you don't feel comfortable because doing I don't, it. I still, after all these years, I don't feel like... Well, I think that's important. There's a, a humbleness to it, but I don't, feel, I don't feel like a normal person at all either. But I still think that that's important that you do have that stress because if you ever get to the, get to the oh. point where you wake up and say... Ho oh, home, I got somebody at two, oh, and I got no, somebody never. at five. The stress keeps me going, and my yeah. little dog in the shop keeps me calm. That yeah. dog is an angel. So hence the reluctant part. That's what the reluctant part is. <laughs> I've, I've always been like, I don't... But is any psychic not reluctant? Yeah, the ones who walk around thinking that they know everything, and like they, you know, they can do everything. I I don't do I I don't think well of course when you see these guys talking do they they think they know it all maybe I mean I had a, a woman a conversation with a woman recently that was kind of funny she was sort of a little bit to me she was talking about how she only deals with the the um, the um, the uh, the masters. The higher, like the high, the, the okay, the ascended ones. Oh God! Yes, I Next. say it like that. The, the ascended masters. <laughs> and she's like, "Don't you want to deal with the ascended masters?" And I'm like, 
No. <laughs> I said, I want to deal with the lowly ghosts. I yes. want to deal, and I pictured all of a sudden like these homeless people, ghosts, sitting yeah. in a graveyard. Like, kind of like the bums. Yeah. The ghost bums. Sitting around the graveyard, hanging out. Well, that's where it's at. Yeah. I said, I want to deal with them. I said, I don't want to deal with the Ascended Masters. And she looked at me like I was, like, beneath her. <laughs> I, said, I said, I want to talk to the ghosts that nobody wants to bother with. The ones that no one wants to talk to. You know, like the bums. <laughs> I, I think said, that's great. I'm glad you did yeah, that. Yeah, I said, I want to talk to the, the lowly ones, the lowly ghost, not the holy ghost, the lowly ghost. Yeah. And she looked at me with this disdain. Like, I'm like the poor, the poor man's ghost talker. <laughs> I want to talk to them and not the ascended masters. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't know what to do with an ascended master. Well, I went, they don't need me to talk to them. Right. Well, they I got their own answers. Them. Yeah, you know? they don't and, need us. But so, and right off, she, she bristled at me. Like I was, <laughs> but I got great satisfaction, and I actually said, "Lowly ghost." <laughs> well, and I think that's good because then when she walked away, she didn't she didn't screen you right. No, she should have no. pre-screened you ahead of time. Well, these are these are the people who, uh, and there is like she wants to be like a life coach and these, this, oh, the, you know, mm -hmm. and tell people what's best for them and everything. And I get the information I get, but it's not from me; it's from the, the loved ones that are connected from the people. When I first started doing the readings back in the 80s, everybody had like their, their spirit guides. I didn't. I, my people, my people, let my people talk to your people. <laughs> my people were the spirits that were connected to who came to see me. I didn't have anyone around me. Because I don't have any decent relatives. <laughs> I don't have like a loving mother or grandmother. And I didn't have any, you know. My father was cool, but you know, he was insane. So, so when people come, they bring their entourage. They bring their entourage, yeah. They bring their people. And sometimes a, a, a dog would run past that they had. Sometimes a bird that they had as a child would fly by. It's really cool. The animals always come because they know I love them. Oh, that's great. It's nice. It's nice. And, and sometimes even like a, a fish, like a person like, you had fish? When, yeah. And they look at me all like flustered. They're like, my fish came? I'm like, yeah, fish. Well, of course. If you took care of something and you nurtured it and loved it, it'll come through. Well, so what you're saying is... It's all about love. That when people come for a reading or for a session... They bring their questions. They bring their answers with them. Yes, and they bring their entourage. <laughs> That's their answer. They bring their entourage. And they, I think ultimately we all know everything. We all have the answers with us. But I have no, well actually, and I know what happens with age, I have no filter whatsoever. I'll say whatever comes through, even the craziest thing. It names that may mean nothing. I'll have to say them if they come through, and not nine out of ten, uh, seven out of ten, those names mean something, and they're weird names, you know, Edgar, Edgar came through the other day, who the hell is that, Edgar, I don't know, it meant somebody to somebody. Well, yeah, there's you a lot of Edgar? weird names, <laughs> and from the past. Yeah, people from, like, it's, it's really... What I'm about... A, what about have you had somebody come through come to see you that for cuz I have a feeling that when people start seeking answers that they cuz I know that there are people that make the rounds with the tarot readers yeah. and they make the rounds with the fortune tellers and they make you know so what about the ones that get the um um they get the they get the readings where they uh, go, like the, they try to fool you? No, there's a, there's a certain kind of spiritual reading where you get, where people come in, I, and I trained in it, I'm here at, this is my age now, it's gone bloop. Uh, you can train, I trained to do this years ago. People would come in and want to know about their relationship with Atlantis, or they oh, want Oh yeah, like, well, it's, that's like a past life thing, right? Yeah. Yeah, I get them. Got one a couple of days ago. 
And yeah, they might have. If 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 you're que- if you're interested enough to question it, chances are you have a connection there. There's people. I mean, there are people connected to aliens right now. I mean, the aliens are around. They're, they're trying to hide them from us, but they're around. And this whole thing, I get I get tired of this whole conspiracy theories because they're not conspiracy. We all know the truth. I agree. Don't you? I, yes, I, I totally, whole thing, they think I they totally dis- get that. They think they discovered all this stuff. It's always been here. Right. Well, that's a big conspiracy. <laughs> it's a big conspiracy. It's a big secret. And, yeah. and the government's trying to pull one over. There's of course, we've always known this. Those know jerks in D.C. can't pull stuff that. over on us. We know all this stuff. And it's just like, and nothing surprises me. It's almost like nothing fires me up anymore. Because it's like, I know it. And it's almost boring now. I'm not surprised by any of it. Are you surprised? That's because it's so extreme. It's so, and then people get so... I mean, it is our times now. Yeah. And our times are so extreme. Yeah. So if somebody came in with an ordinary question or an ordinary problem, you'd snore through it, right? Yeah, Yeah. I mean, it's just... I've had had everything from... um, possessed children to um, um, people who think they're Jesus. This is all relatively recent. Mm-hmm. And you know, it could, you know, I'm, I'm open for any of it, really. Nothing, will, nothing surprises me, honestly. I, I'm, I'm not surprised by any of it. And I'm not saying any of it's not true. It's just, it's how you perceive things. Right. Just how, however, I mean, there is there is evil out there. There's bad entities, but how come though? For all the things I do with with people and all the people I see, I don't even have nightmares. I never had one. Not anymore. I had them when I was little, but not now. I don't. I'm not afraid of ghosts. I could walk through graveyards. I could sit in the dark. I could be anywhere. I'm not afraid of anything. Is that because you have daymares? No, I feel no fear. No fear of anything in the supernatural realm, only of humans. Human people scare me and what they're capable of doing. Humans scare me. I, I get scared when I see groups of children out together. Yeah. Do you have people come in for readings that you're afraid of? No, because I could easily get rid of them from the store. I just don't. I see some people I know that I have to lock the door if I see them out on the street, though. And these are human people walking around. But as far as like anything in the supernatural, I'm not afraid of anything. I'm not afraid of the thought of death. I'm not afraid of any of it. Well, I think that's good. Yeah. That's positive. Yeah, I'm not. I remember every morning and when I stay in England, I take walks, early morning walks in the graveyards by myself. And I love it. It's peaceful. And um, I feel nothing, nothing, nothing scary to me. Yeah, I would. Yeah, and if you're not if you're not bothered no. by the supernatural not at all, then um, it's easier for you to communicate with it. Yeah. I would think not bothered at all, not bothered. But I am like I get weird feelings just by passing some people on the street. Like there, that's where the problem is from people. So, are those people increasing in your life? I kind of tend to stay away from them, but there are more around on the street. Okay, that was my question. Yeah, that really is. I, I feel more nervous. I wake up and I feel more like having to go out into the world is a little scarier. Mm-hmm. You know. How much of that do you think is our current political situation? I don't know whether it's, it, it's probably, well, it's a, probably a lot. I think people are being pitted against each other constantly and it's just bringing out hate hatred and rage where it doesn't have to be yeah well i think that that was created it's created it was created recently so uh people could could war well so now that we've got the hatred and the rage and we've got people who did not focus on hatred and rage up until recently yeah and did not now we've got people i think who are manifesting they're manifesting it and there's more groups of hate as you know 
and even in uh, Europe, they're congregating more. How long is this going to last? That's a scary question. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure it's ending. When's peace going to happen? I, I, I don't. I don't foresee it. I try to. Th I try to. You know, say okay. Let's be. Let's you know not get too involved. Let's try to back away from it. Everything goes like the pendulum swings, and now we're going over here with the hate and the rage, and now we're kind of. But you don't know because, for me, the hate and rage came like that. But yes. I don't know if it really did. I don't know if it just, and I just wasn't aware of it. I think it came like that, but it, it's also been um, bubbling on, on the surface for a while. And it was just, this is what's coming through right now. It is, uh, we have now an excuse to unleash it. It's unleashing the beast. That's so what, what can people do if they want to stuff it back in the box? I think work in small groups. Work small instead of global. And how would you, can you do it in your own little community or little world first instead of trying to fix the whole world, fix what's close to home first? And when you say fix what's close or, to home, what do you mean? Where I'm living right now in my little land where I live, there's rage everywhere. There's people walking around so angry. In Woodstock, you know, I'm in a section where I'm living, and we just need to try to contain it. In that little place, rather than do try to fix the whole world at this point. Okay, I see you just work, work. I, you know, actually, but now I'm going to say something that probably sounds pretty stupid. Yeah. But I think a certain number of people that are walking around angry, mm -hmm. you know, they've been passed over for a long time. Yeah. And they're getting yeah. tired. They're getting tired, yeah. And so they have a reason. But I'm not sure that anger and rage is the solution. No, it isn't. It isn't. It's not. Well, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> no, it's not. Know. It's not the solution. They've got to. It, it's got. It's got to end somehow. But it's been unleashed, and they're fi feeling it more. It's almost like a psychic thing. They're feeling it more from the from the the energy. Well, it's definitely loose. It's definitely loose. It's unleashed. It's and unleashed. and I don't think that people's word counts very much anymore. Nope. And so when you realize that the people around you who are talking to you and telling if, mm -hmm. as a young person telling you how the world should be, mm -hmm. you don't know you don't trust that person anymore. So when there's more tr when there's no trust, there's no trust. Then it becomes very difficult. And also, there's a loss, I believe, of faith. Oh, yeah. There's no, I mean, there's no faith. I don't feel, I mean, I, I did have an amazing woman who came to see me today that she was just literally radiating joy. Oh, wow. And wow, that's a change. Whoa. Whoa. She walked in and she was like, like a beacon of light. Okay. And I am not used to that, believe me. And she came in and I was looking at her almost it, it was almost like wow. it was almost it almost knocked me over because it was so different than normal. And I have to say that I actually said because I had seen her like two years ago and she did not seem like the same person. And it wasn't medication and it wasn't anything other than I almost hate to say this. She had for whatever reason, she found a church. Way. And it was a non-denominational church. And I was like, what church is she going to? Yeah, we and could use a little of we that. We could use a little of that. And I kept going. I was actually tongue-tied, which is not, because usually the flow happens very quickly with me. And I was looking at her like, I actually was. <sighs> wow. I couldn't. And she's like, I am so light and I'm so blessed. And I was like, what okay. church are you going to? And it was a church and believe it or not, she moved to Tennessee. 
<laughs> we're looking at each other like yeah that. and she was way happy and I said is it like a born again thing and she's like no but I'm full of God energy and it was a little gave me hope actually but oh that sounds what, wonderful I don't know what church that was and I, I, I certainly have never been in it but she did come back up here to see you after a couple yeah, of years. Yeah, and it was a it was a church, so I'm she she was okay with seeing me. It was That's like, wonderful. I'm still pondering that. That just happened like two hours ago, by the way. Wow. I'm still I I told her, I said, I'm tongue tied. I you're you're ra you're radiating energy, you're radiating light. Wow. So that's not something to see every day, I have to say. No. But it gave me hope for faith. I mean, well, do churches do that nowadays? I think I think we're going. To, I think that if you can, whether it's Christianity or Judaism or Mo whatever, whatever your whatever was, the she was happy. You you've got to offer something yeah. to your population. You yeah. can't just be negative all the time. Yeah. Or that's my take on it. Yeah, hey, absolutely. It's nice to sound about somebody positive in this world for a change and, Whoa. She, and she was so just lovely and she just just and it's so funny because comparatively it was like so different than the, the normal population wow but i felt like whoa you know it was kind of funny actually you think maybe she's um the first one of a new crowd coming through or this well is they better start moving up quicker like that because whatever she was doing I was like I want to have some of that yeah we'd yeah. like some of that we'd like some change. of that here but I I don't know what kind of church that was I don't I, <laughs> I don't know if I, I don't either I don't know if they let me in honestly but it well, was it was cool and she came to see me so she was open to it this whatever you know I've been lucky though I haven't been like cast I haven't been brought at the stake yet well this life you know it's happened before. Yeah. Not this time. Um, I've been really regarded not as, you know, a witch or anything. This life. Pretty much. <laughs> you know, that's an interesting thing. Yeah, it's been we good. We think of our current times as somewhat mm -hmm. enlightened. Mm -hmm. But then with this enlightenment has come all this other mess. Yeah. And it, it, it just it's not wonders. It's not enlightened at all. Yeah. No, it's not. I I I, I had some very disturbing um, conversations with some even hippie people lately that were shocking. Really? Yeah. I don't know how much I can say on, t on TV. But it's not enlightened. Not enlightened at all. It had to do with smiting certain um, people. Smiting. They use the word smiting. That's a medieval term. Smiting. I'm just going to say Can I just say it? Yeah. These, I'm going to say it. I don't care if they're watching it. I'm in my shop, and I had these uh, people that I've known for years. Just see them, Grateful Dead people, wearing tie-dyes. Absolutely shocked out of my mind about this. This happened a few weeks ago. Um, came around and asked if I had something uh, in my shop. Uh, uh, because uh, they said that um, Jesus is very unhappy because um, of all the uh, homosexuals that are around Woodstock and they must be smited. Oh my word. My eyes almost popped out of my head. Literally popped out of my head. I, I did not expect this. And they're coming to me to ask, and, and I'm surprised they haven't like burned me at the stake out in front of my, my store. And these are people that I've seen for years in, in Woodstock, and they were like, you know, they're they're a, um, a perversion, and Jesus is. They're all coming out so Jesus can gather them together, and uh, damn them, they, they must be smited. And I said, get away from me, get away from me. And <laughs> this is two weeks life. ago in front of my store in Woodstock. Listen, if you're gonna get upset with that. What do you, what about the trans movement? 
I see the I see the trans movement. I see it's those freedom figures. and it's beautiful freedom. Yeah, I and see that as just pure freedom. It's to beautiful. Me it is. And most of my friends are are bi, trans, or gay, or I, every, I love, everybody. I love everyone who is different. Yeah, obviously. Well, you but, know, but and I to come to me who yeah, this no. with this that. Maybe it's not believable, or maybe I don't know. When I hear stuff like that, when I hear stuff like that, I think my defense is this can't be real. No, it was real. But it is. It, it is. Was real. I'm just it was right here, it. right in front of my store, two weeks ago. Well, you know, this and is Woodstock. Everything comes to Woodstock. I didn't even know. I didn't even know that this was happening here. I didn't even know, and I've been here, you know, and and this was shocking to me. Well, so there man. are. So, when, the, that was. When I first moved into Woodstock, I thought, boy, everything, you know, is everything is fine, it's all okay, and that's the first thing I learned, was it's really not, you know? So it's kind of what I, what I, I am just fortunate so far that I haven't been, um, you know, you know what that, what damn Trump used to always talk about, the witch hunts, that used to always bother me, because the real witch hunts, by the way, as you all know, nine million European women were burned at the stake, not only women, but men and children. Yeah. Nine million, maybe more. So don't talk about witch hunts, you know? And so anyway, here I am doing my thing. I, I laugh um, thinking about this because every day it's like I'm talking, I'm raising dead, I'm not raising the dead, but I go home and I feel like, well, I talked to a dead person today. That's what <laughs> I do. I tell my poor son who's very conservative and I'm like, Gavin, oh, what do you do today, mom? Oh, I talked to somebody's dead grandmother. <laughs> dead uncle but showed you, up. The question is, is that dead grandmother, is she really dead? No one's ever really dead. Actually, that's the other thing. So many people come through and go, I'm not dead. What's dead? What is dead? It's just a, we take off this, this skin. The skin is nothing. It's a dress, you take it off, put on something more comfortable, which is spirit. Right. This is nothing. Right. This is something you get sick and old and worn out. It's like a, it breaks down, you don't need it anymore. There have been so many orb pictures, and by the way, uh, uh, digital cameras pick up orbs amazingly. You go on my Facebook page, there's orbs everywhere. A woman showed me a picture of a, a beautiful orb. Uh, her dog was dying, and her, the, wo the woman that had the husband that hit by a train. Yeah. Well, apparently, he came a couple of days later, their dog was dying, and he he was standing there to collect the dog. The oh orb of him was over the dog. Oh my God! It's beautiful, big she orb. She lost the husband and, and the, the dog, dog in the same, same week. The same week, couple of days oh later. Oh my God, that poor. But woman. the orb was right over the dog to take the dog. The husband, the dog loved the the uh, husband. Oh, that's wild. But the orbs, the orbs are so around. They're beautiful, and they just they, that's what spirits actually look like. They're orbs. They're just orbs. We're just balls of light. That's all. That's all we are. So they don't eat. They don't do anything except it's funny because when people come through in readings, they like to show us or me how they used to look. So sometimes, like old Uncle Freddy would be holding a glass of bourbon because he was a drinker, maybe. But he doesn't have that anymore. But he, he comes through like that. Or right, because they don't eat anymore. They don't have anything. They don't have a body. But they come in to demonstrate who they used to be. It's nice. That's, that's what so it is. that's a really <clears throat> kind of like a giving moment. Because it takes the energy. They have to They, they have, have to, to. It uses a lot of energy. That persona. And the other thing is that's what people, and I might have told you this before, and we, we all know this, I think, when we feel chills when spirits come, it's because they're using our life force, our body energy, to come through. It's not because it's scary. It's because they have to use us to generate energy to, to materialize. So that's why we get cold when spirits are in that room. Oh, that's interesting. It's not because, oh, it's scary. We're batteries for them. So, so often in readings, people get chills. Sometimes they get hot because the, the spirits are present. The other thing and we talked about is this time thing. What is this deal with time? People could be coming in for a session. They usually last about an hour. Time is flying. 
people look at me going, isn't time like going weird right now? Yeah. It's either going too fast or too slow. It doesn't seem like an hour, doesn't seem like an hour. Feels like we're all falling into a time thing. Well, and it's interesting to me that for some people it's too slow and for others yeah. it's too fast. And it used to, time was kind of uniform. Not Does anymore. that make sense? Not anymore. And now it's just like a hodgepodge. It's quantum physics, actually. All time is happening at once, past, present, and future. It's kind of, I, I'm, not dis, I'm not saying it's not right. No. It's, I'm just saying, you know, that's kind of I can't figure above it out my pay grade. Well, I can't figure it out either, but when I look at a person now and they come to me, I see all the, t all the time that's around them. It's not just simple anymore. Nothing, not, nope. nothing is cut and dry it's not anymore. Cut and dry. It's not cut and dry. I see all the t time of... I never go to the, like, the moment of death or anything. Never like that. And people so mask that, and like it's not for me to know, really. But I, I don't. Well, I there. don't think I don't you go don't go to the time of death no. because you see the it's person, not. you see the person through mm -hmm. lifetimes. Yes, yeah. yeah, I don't go through the death. Lifetimes. It's not for. And but I do sometimes feel the death of like other, like mostly older relatives around them. They all know that going anyway, pretty much. That you is know, not scary, um, really. I think sometimes, like, I think that maybe that part of that is your personality, because when you, there are some people who, for example, they see um, murders or, yeah. uh, you know, very um, destructive yeah. things happening, and no, you don't do that. I don't do that. No, I, there's been a few clients in the past year that I've helped with murders. But, really? And, um, yeah, and uh, just a few. And they, they have, okay, here's a, here's a guy, here's a person. Um, there was a, a, a beautiful young woman who came to me, and she was worried. She wanted to find out who murdered her brother. Oh, my God. And her brother... All I kept getting from the brother. See, this is how it comes to me. I always, I always see like the 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 brother's last thing he saw. Oh wow! It's always the moment of his death. Oh. Okay. So I kept saying tiger, tiger, and I didn't know what that meant. Turned out, the boy that they got, that killed him, had a tiger tattoo on his throat. Oh my gosh. So when he was, and it actually was his girlfriend's son. Oh my gosh. And he's been arrested for the murder. But the last thing that the, her brother saw was him beaten. And there was the tiger. And that was the tiger. He had a big oh tiger God. tattoo on his. Do so, you see yourself doing that in the future? No, I don't want to. Yeah, I don't, I don't, see, I don't to. see you doing that. I don't that. want to. Like, the mother's going to come to see me soon to find out. Like, the boy's in prison, and there's other things going on. Like, the girlfriend had set the, her son up to kill the boyfriend. It's a big, huge thing. And I'm kind of involved with that court thing, but not officially. It's just terrible. You know, he was home watching TV, this guy, and he got bit, beaten up to death by his girlfriend's son. Yeah. But it's something like, I don't think what I said is going to really hold out in court. But the kid is arrested. I mean, he's in jail. He didn't yeah. get to doing it. But it's interesting that what I see, saw at the, the end of it, was not... I didn't get his name or anything. I just saw the tattoo of the tiger. Well, that, that was probably yeah. enough. Yeah. But, but you know, to have that experience... Oh, and carry it around. Yeah, I don't want to see that stuff. Yeah. But, but, and then that's the other thing. When, um, back in the 90s, I used to do, they used to contact me for a lot of police work for missing children. Oh, God. No. I don't want to do it. They're no. all dead, usually. And the other thing is now, even in Woodstock, I get requests for a lot of missing pets. I don't want to do it. No. No. It, it's, it's, it, it, it's very it's frustrating bad. It's and bad it's because, sad. And then I think, how about if I'm wrong? How about if I say to somebody that their cat's dead and that the cat isn't and then they give up, give up looking for it? Yeah. I don't want that responsibility and it's too huge. Yeah. Because you know, I don't feel 
like I'm absolutely positive. Listen, especially not if you're doing enough. People no. come to your shop. They I, I ask don't want you to do questions. It. It's too. It's too much. It's too. It's like talking about an animal. It's like talking about the child. I can't do it. Yeah. I don't want to. It's. It's. Um, I'm too sensitive for that. You know. Um, no. But they they come and they. You know. It's. We have. Technology has replaced, obviously, a lot of people's jobs. Interesting, obviously, and sadly, in a lot of ways. Somehow, what I do hasn't really been replaced. No. You know, and when you think about it, it's a very, very, very old um, profession. Maybe not the oldest. It's the other one that's probably the oldest, but it's pretty old. Oh, I think so. You know, and... It's kind of fascinating how it's still been going on through all these years and people still come and it's, it's, there's a nostalgic and a sweetness and a, a, a I have reverence for the people who come because it shows that there's a sort of deep-seated belief in something beyond just technology, you know, and it goes back back, 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 hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, thousands of years. And I just wanted to be normal. I remember when it came out in the 90s, there was a show called Buffy the Vampire Slayer, which I loved, because she just wanted to be a normal girl. And I always used to think, I wanted to be a normal girl. I didn't want to have this gift, but you know, this is what I do, this is all I've ever done. I can't do it, I can't even drive a car. <laughs> Listen. Have you taught your son to do what you do? He doesn't want to believe in anything. In fact, he is mostly an atheist. He doesn't want to believe in it. He says to me stuff like, you've got some kind of magic, but I don't know what it is. And, but he's not interested in learning. No, but I have to tell a little secret. He's always right about people. Always. <laughs> then he's got it. Yeah, he's always right. There are things that he's come up with years ago, and I'd be like, oh, Gavin, how could you possibly say that? He's always right. Well, and my, my best friend Sarah always says, ask Gavin, he's always right. And he is. But he doesn't really, he doesn't want to believe in any kind of, you know, con conforming religion or anything like that. He believes maybe in something, but he doesn't admit to it. So He doesn't want to pin himself down. He doesn't down. want to pin himself down. Well, is it because he's just not mature enough? Give him another few years? I think he's a very, very old man soul. So it'll give him another few years. He doesn't want to believe. Oh my goodness, we're down to three minutes. Whoa. It's like, whoa. Well now, if we've got three minutes, can you talk again about how people can reach you? Okay, so um, I am, in this town I'm known as Fiona, but I'm also, and I have a shop called Fiona, but to book an appointment you go to SusanFionaSaxman at gmail.com and my assistant, Albert, will put you on the calendar. Right now, I'm sort of booked. Well, I'm sort of booked, but I can add more people in. But I have taken people into the end of September and into October for appointments. And that's how you see me. You have a shop here. Yes, Fiona. Can people go shopping in your yeah, shop? Yeah, you can go in as long. If, if the sign is up and I'm doing a session, I'll say doing a reading. But other than that, come on in. and visit and my book is in there for sale and uh, you can meet me and see my weird little dog and where I am. Oh your weird, weird little dog is adorable. She's an angel. She real. I got an angel she fell out of the sky. Oh she's the most adorable dog and, and she, she and is so perceptive. And her name is Ghost because well she looks like one. <laughs> she's, she's darling. I think she's see-through. In color. <laughs> she's adorable. She she's phosphorescent. And her little coat shines. Oh, I think she's a she's not normal. She's not normal at all. So it's it's a really nice little shop. It's a weird little shop because I just filled it with stuff that I like. And I uh, travel to England a lot and I get really interesting clothes and bring them back cuz yeah. Cuz I'm like that. It's a it's a fun place. Yeah. So well, I hope, you'll, I, th I hope you'll come back soon. I definitely will. It's There's been always a, stories. <laughs> it's been a great program. Thank you. Thank it's you. been wonderful. It's always nice to be here. So and thank you very much, 
And thank you, Ellen. And we look forward to seeing everyone on YouTube. Yes, we like this. This this will be all over the world. Yes. Right? We're like, we're international. Yes. (laughs) We are interplanetary. Interplanetary. (laughs) Interdimensional, actually. Yes, we are interdimensional. I like that one. Yes, we are.